Hello, my fellow Earth Angels. Welcome back to another couple of days in my life and hopefully a little pocket of peace for your day. These are some random, tender, productive days of mine in New York City. And honestly, I just wanted to hang out. So let's get into it. I have been filming for a few days, but I just wanted to introduce you back into this space, into my energy, and I'm feeling a little bit on one today, but I just have honestly a lot of random computer work to do, but I am feeling myself slowly slip into seasonal depression, so I'm going to force myself to go outside today. The sun is shining. It was raining all day yesterday, so I'm going to go to Central Park once again. In the spaciousness is where I feel the closest to myself and where I build the most excitement and sensuality and clarity about life alone, and that's what I'm going to give to myself the next few days. Okay, so I was gifted a little meal plan for the week of these healthy meals and i'm eating some cinnamon cider donuts with a long berry compote let's see i don't know i don't know about this but mm. <laughs> and this is my outfit of the day i'm already sweating right now which means i'll probably be the perfect temperature when i get outside but me gusta mucho and honestly, one of the reasons I have so much energy right now is because I just spent a week with my family and it was so peaceful and so wonderful and we had really deep, real conversations. We cried together, which is not a level of intimacy I've ever experienced with any of my family members, talking about what's real and true. With my mom having Alzheimer's, it's affected all of us differently and it can get really emotional and we just haven't been able to hold each other in that space until this past week. and. I just feel when I heal parts of my past, so much more energy can flood into my present. Little fragments just returning back to wholeness and it heals my inner child so much and makes me feel so much more capable of being a human and being an adult and moving through the world with confidence. So that's what I'm on right now as well as listening to so much Spanish music which like activates me it activates me so much so that's what's in my headphones but today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp, which connects you to a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful unbiased advice starting therapy can be hard the right therapist for you may not be in your area and some people find the face-to-face -face interaction of therapy a bit uncomfortable with BetterHelp, you can have therapy sessions as a phone call video chat or even via messaging if you prefer that whatever is the most comfortable version of therapy for you and BetterHelp can match you with one of over 30,000 therapists in their network which gives you access to a wider range of expertise that may not be available in your area and all you have to do to get started is fill out a questionnaire to address some of your specific needs and then you'll get matched with a licensed therapist if the therapist you're first matched with doesn't feel like the right fit which can be common when starting therapy you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without stress about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life today. And if you think you might benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. You can click the link in my description box or visit betterhelp.com slash hitomi for a 10% discount off your first month of therapy with a licensed professional. I'm gonna head out the door now. I'm going to do some mantra. I brought my mala beads and I thought I would do 108 rounds and then just do some journaling. This is a date with myself. This is self-intimacy, which is so important to me. This feels kind of funny. Just me in meditation in this big ass coat in New York. It's just, you can take your practices anywhere. You can embody the highest love and truth anywhere you are and it doesn't have to look any type of way. All you need is your knowing heart. The last time I was in a park in my last vlog, I was talking about Akotar that 
five part fantasy series and I finished that. I immediately wanted to reread it but I'm going to move on to Throne of Glass next. But my buffer in between that is Braiding Sweetgrass. I'm on chapter eight right now and it is so good and I've been recommended that for years and now I'm going to be the one to recommend it if you haven't read it yet. It is just so deep and connecting me with a lot of lessons that I've learned from other indigenous friends, just little overlaps about how to how to walk this earth with grace and how to have a reciprocal relationship with nature and the importance of keeping indigenous language alive and just so much, there's so much there. One of my favorite quotes so far is, the land knows you even when you are lost. That's been, wow, just opening my heart a lot. But it's starting to get a little chilly. I'm gonna run some errands and maybe get some matcha. I'm kind of addicted to researching random delicious food spots on TikTok and then going to them in the city, so I might do that. Talk to a stranger on a small restaurant bench. No more than 200 square feet contained the hole in the wall on a giddy spot where women behind a counter called out names periodically and indie music blared on the speakers as my soundtrack. It was warm enough to remove my layers and be sat shoulder to shoulder with the five lucky strangers who made it onto the bench for waiting. I feel at home in the forced intimacy of small spaces, especially in New York especially when I hear Japanese being spoken all around me. I've been trying not to use my phone to pacify boredom. I've been trying to talk to strangers more, which becomes a drawbridge for new worlds I would otherwise pretend didn't exist. And I've been vocalizing every compliment I hear in my head about people. It was nothing crazy, a simple question, yet also a drawbridge. Have you been here before? We got to talking and found out we both discovered this spot from TikTok, shared our secret shame at our source of intel. We got into banter about simple things, but it was the feeling of it all. For perhaps the first time, I wanted to talk to a stranger because I thought it would amplify the unrepeatable moment, and it did. How can a basic conversation bring me into a subtle euphoria? It's because I want to live because I want to experience everything in every moment and I feel unhindered by my shyness or smallness. I feel free to act on my curiosity and to be the kind of simple warmth I always imagined. It wasn't just a conversation, it was being here, now. Every time I talk to strangers, it uplifts me and I just never thought I would feel that way. Still post a complete and utter depression where I'm feeling excited about life, excited about connecting with people, and confident enough to make that drawbridge connection with a stranger and just be like, hey, what's up? Like, I just never thought <laughs> I would be that person and I would look at other people in the world who would banter so easily. I didn't even know how to do small talk and I don't like small talk, but I didn't even know how to do it for most of my life. And now I know how to do it and it can be a preliminary to deeper conversations, but feeling new feelings revolving around being excited to live and exist in each unrepeatable now moment. Now let's rewind to two weeks prior when I was in my little sublet in bed -Stuy. I got this place to film and have some space away from my dad's apartment. I just dropped into my regular routine doing a little bit of stretching and asana in the morning a little Pilates class here and there, but honestly, I was working on quite a few videos this week and felt on the brink of overwhelm throughout every single clip for the rest of this video, but I just wanted to share what's fully real and true for me, even though my version of overwhelm or 
meltdown is just very tame it's really just me feeling a constant urge to scroll on my phone and be procrastinating rather than present but i don't act upon that i act in opposition to what my limiting belief systems ask of me and i make it through the day but i just had a bunch of random errands to run this day and was honestly reflecting on love so much i think that's one of the biggest gifts that my friends bring me is that their lives are a living expression of freedom and their love is so boundless i have personally felt myself fall into the role of what other people expect of me in relationships i feel so free when i just claim and honor who i am as a lover and what i desire which isn't always just full monogamy and just a conventional relationship i just want people to be themselves and to be honest and that is love to me like intimate moments of spiritual nudity is what feels most interesting and exciting to me right now beyond just having someone devote their whole being to me i just want someone to be honest and become by my side and i'm not seeking anything but i feel like every time after you go through a breakup you refine more and more of what you're looking for in general or what love means to you and it felt very appropriate to go to this gallery with my friend chloe who declares herself an eternal student of love and is in a very similar place in life she has a shirt which she embroidered all the names of her past lovers on and has been reconnecting with a lot of them seeing what reflections they have for her and how she can use that as a form of service <laughs> and uh, I also went with my ex so it brought up a lot of interesting conversations and it was just a beautiful end to the day, a full circle moment. And I just feel like I'm learning to be more brave because I'm learning to be myself despite what anyone might expect of me or want to hear from me. But here's a cobbler haul. I am so excited that I got these boots fixed. So these are secondhand fry boots. I wore them so much. They started to get destroyed. They put this little heel attachment on the bottom because it was getting really worn. They cleaned up the suede and they reattached the boot to the base. So these are revamped because I <laughs> glued this shoe back on to this base so many times and it kept coming off. It was not cute. That was the reality of these boots. These were also super worn in the heel and in this front part, the wood was starting to like splinter almost. And so they fixed the sole. I can't believe it. They put a Vibram thing on here and they're good as new. They polished them and I just love a cobbler. I love a trade that is so timeless and these boots, I wear them so much. So it was so worth it to get them fixed up. Shit just got so real, it got so good. I'm about to eat some leftover Ethiopian food. I have my injera and I love all the beans, all the flavors, all the sauces, the consistency, it's so good. I have mushroom, chickpea, and cabbage here. Wow. And I'm gonna read for the next 30 minutes until my meeting, so this is how navigating life right now life is so not serious emotions are so not serious heartbreak i mean ultimately it's not that serious okay no heartbreak is actually really deep i just had a really intense conversation with my ex today and that was so heavy <laughs> But then you just sing about it and you learn about it and you keep on loving. Love never dies. I believe that even when love ends with a particular person, you still carry so much of them with you. Yes, the bad at times, but also the good. And everyone that we love informs us how to love better, more truly, you know? A lot of times you just learn what's actually important to you and you can take that into every other partnership. So everyone has an offering everyone is an offering in our lives as long as they're being authentic to themselves and i've certainly learned a lot about love from this past relationship and it's been life-changing and i feel so close to myself because of that i spent a few hours this morning just rotting in bed to be honest i don't feel super good i feel a bit under the weather and so I just laid there for a while and then I finally did my skincare routine which makes me feel like I can start my day. And I picked up some bagels because I just felt like carbs were needed as 
<laughs> just motivation also to continue and go throughout my day. And I wanted to share this glorious moment with you. This is my first New York City bagel and I got a vegan bacon, egg and cheese with Frank's hot sauce and some ketchup. This is so good. I've been trying not to eat processed foods, but I needed to make an exception for this. This is my go-to bagel situation. Also got an everything bagel with tofu scallion cream cheese, which is the number one staple for me. This is my favorite. I love tofu scallion. I don't think that there's a better combination than everything bagel with scallion cream cheese. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I completely crushed those bagels and now I have to speed edit this video. It's this one. It should be up by now. Um, in the next hour and a half, I need to finish it because my managers need to approve it. Somehow I managed to pull that off. I'm going to export at this cafe. I have my laptop in here and I'm going to head out for my meeting. It's actually regarding a potential book and mostly just learning how to go about the book writing and publishing process. Mostly just the formatting of it all because I've always wanted to write a book. I have these chapters in my mind. I have these things that I want to share, but I don't know how to format it and how to begin that process. So I'm going to go right now. This is a very proper outfit. The cardigan with this little top and skirt. Got my boots on. It is 2.30 right now. I filmed this video. I'm editing it right now and hopefully gonna get it uploaded in the next hour for approval from my managers. I'm just kind of stockpiling and finishing some sponsored videos before I go to my grandma's house and can't film. So that's why I've been working on like four videos this week, which is wild. But I'm going to dinner with my friends tonight. I actually organized a chef to cook us a Szechuanese meal. I just wanted to treat my friends because I love them so much and I haven't been able to prioritize them as much as I want to. And then after my friend Chloe and I are going to a little jazz club, it's this place called the Red Pavilion that has a lot of Asian events and it's it's a cabaret show and they just have really cool themed asian events like they had a studio ghibli night tonight is based on the movie in the mood for love which is an incredible movie that's what the jazz vibe is about and i'll see you when i'm ready i'm wearing my cariño dress i had a really cute necklace on it was this one all wrapped around Hello, it is almost five. I'm exporting my video and pretty much ready for dinner. I thrifted this top and I love it so much. It's very in the mood for love. I'm just wearing it with my trousers and I really wanted to wear it with these heels, but I just think that my toes will be way too cold. But yeah, this is my little look. I'm kind of catching my breath a little bit, so I'm excited for my commute, my train ride. It always feels like this transition this liminal space in a train cart where i can enter into the next part of my day and i feel like going for a walk in nature would do that for me in the past i'd be like oh this is my time to let go of all of my thoughts and rest in the lightness but you know we gotta do what we gotta do the train is now my little meditation portal i don't know if i like my hair like this i think i'm actually Yes, this is much better. I've been giving myself blowouts in case you're wondering what is going on with my hair. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna head out. Okay, so I left really early and I don't wanna get there and just bother the chef, so I decided to sit on this little stoop and finish my journal entry of the day. When you have a dinner party at six, but emotions to process at 5.30, <laughs> <laughs> a couple things. Um, for Malvo de Flo, I have three different types of fermented bean paste in here. Oh, that's mm. so sweet of you. <laughs> so it has like a lot of layered flavor. This is Chloe, and she really likes food, which is why I was so excited <laughs> to be here. <laughs> Thank you, Ito. 
<laughs> Cheers. Cheers. the next day I've been editing this whole day so far it's about noon and here's how it works with my videos I'll do a rough cut which takes me like three to four hours and then I'll do a final cut which takes me a long ass time just getting the music and the text and the little lens flares and the um, just making it cute making it a moment making it a little artsy so that's what I've been doing today but I'm gonna take a break and do my laundry because it is so long overdue let's go to the laundromat this is my outfit of the day. I just want to be so comfortable. I have mismatched socks with my little loafers today. I lit my candles and it's just been a good self-care morning. Very rejuvenating. And I just feel so unapologetic in the time I've been taking for myself because I had a lot more plans this week and I canceled on so many of them. And my friends really get it because they are also honoring themselves and I'm just really happy that I'm at a point in my life where I'm not feeling bad about needing a lot of time alone. I pretty much all the time I spend in community, I need that same amount of time alone and I've been giving that to myself. But I was reading this book that I got at a Deepak Chopra talk last week, Living in the Light. They gave it to me for free, so I don't know if I necessarily recommend it, but it does have a lot of integratable practices, which we love to see. Um, but there's a little list. It says, you are grounded when being embodied brings you joy. You understand the deep wisdom of your body. You feel attuned to nature. You cherish the earth for creating earthly existence. You feel unembarrassed by basic bodily functions. You appreciate other people's earthiness. You feel stable and steady during periods of change. You experience equanimity in the face of aging and dying. Your sensual and sexual life is gratifying without prudery or shame. And I resonate with that that's pretty much everything I was talking about in my video and any areas of our life that we have resistance against that is where our work begins whether that's aging whether that's romantic love or relationships whether that's um, judgments against certain groups of people that is where our work begins and I feel like my spiritual journey at this point is me clocking myself and taking inventory of any walls that I have up or any times where my behavior doesn't align with my belief systems and who I want to be in the world but my friend Victoria is coming over she has taken the train from Jersey so I'm gonna surprise her with some cacao from my favorite tea spot and then we're gonna watch the Hunger Games today we're gonna go to dinner and it's a cute girl date I'm so excited this is my really random outfit of the day I'm wearing my earth angel skirt a top that I thrifted my boots I'm wearing tights today which always make me feel like I'm in a theater production that's that on that I'm gonna put my little coat on and head to meet Victoria and then I spent the rest of the day with my sweet sister. For the past few years, every single relationship that I have, every friendship is just such a pure reflection of who I want to be more of in the world and just the deep love I've always wanted to find. And I feel so blessed for that reason. And it honestly just takes me really honoring and knowing myself to show up and magnify these kinds of relationships. But that's all I have for you today. I hope to see you in a video soon. And until I do, I hope you take some deep belly breaths. Bye.